Hello everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. Today we are doing control cavities. This base is getting a weird little preamp in it. Um, so I need to make a sort of fairly large hole. Uh, the guitar is getting uh, the standard uh, two volumes and two tones. And the uh, five string bass over here is getting a master, blend and tone. We did talk about putting a hot switch in there to put the two uh, pickups in series straight to the output. Which we may look at in the future, but for now we're just going to go with the three knobs and an output. So we need to cut a hole in the back of this, and there's a number of ways we can do it, and I've been working the chisels pretty hard recently. Uh, I thought I would actually try and do this on the base at least, with, uh, with the pantograph, because you can cut a shape and then you can replicate that uh, multiple times and get everything lining up. So what I've done is I've cut a piece of acrylic, to be a control cover and now I just need to carve that into the wood. Now I've never used the pantograph to carve into a guitar body before so this is going to be really interesting to see if this works. The whole idea of this thing is that uh, the stylus just rides in, ideally, uh, it just rides in a slot in the pattern and just cuts more or less uh, exactly where you want it to every single time. Now, uh, I've actually had to carve two channels in here, and that's because I need to account for the width of the cutter. Now, I'm going to be cutting the acrylic using the outer race, because the width of the cutter uh, will bring the cut through to the center line that I've drawn here. And the same goes when I'm carving out the body, is that uh, if I cut on this line, then the width of the cutter will cut to the center line. And that's what we want. Um, uh, it's a little bit sketchy, it's a little bit haphazard. I've done a test cut on a piece of scrap and it worked out rather well. So, uh, yeah, let's put some... <laughs> let's put some nerves to the test and some, some guitar bodies on the line. Right, now then, um, in a rare twist of events, I'm actually going to um, take the rest of this out with the router. I'm just going to do it freehand and just to depth, uh, just because I want to see if that will just drop nicely in. Um, it should do. Should do. It's uh, calculated to have about uh, half a millimetre uh, of clearance, uh, and then allowing, of course, for, for sanding clean and stuff. Um, it should be pretty much... Uh, a dead perfect fit. One of the things about control cavities is that they're on the back. Not many people see this except for the uh, musician themselves, and it's nice to have it nice, uh, but it's not entirely critical. That's actually one of the nicest fits I've ever gotten. Uh, there's a tiny little bit of sideways movement there, but uh, none going that way. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I think what I'll do differently next time on the next one is when I'm cutting the outline with the pantograph, um, I will simply drop the cutter in the center and just work a work a hole to the depth that I've got uh, and then I can just drop the router and set the depth to that same depth so uh, then I can get everything nice but in the meantime I need to pry that out of there cut the rest of this out
Okay, one down. This being a control cavity, of course, it's going to have a lot of stuff in there, and it'll be foil lined, so I'm not that worried about sort of sanding it off nice. Um, uh, and this being a clear cover, uh, you can either choose to see what's in there, or we can put something interesting behind it. Uh, I am thinking of getting a reverse image of my logo printed and engraving it in there, so you can see it from the front. Uh, I don't know what I'll do about that. I might just put a picture of Albert there. Um, right, one down. Next. For the five string bass, I'm going to have to modify the pattern somewhat because that looks that looks a bit out of place. You you could argue that that looks a bit out of place on the other ones, but it's done now. Um, I'm getting to grips with sort of how the uh, how the machine works and its sort of idioms, idiosyncrasies and how to actually make these a little bit better as well. So uh, I'm going to try and do this one right and do a really nice job. So that's the shape that I've got on the machine, that's the shape it's spat out. Uh, I think I want to just sort of cut this corner a bit and then bring that line across there. So I'll sketch this out, then I'll carve the channel in, and then we'll give it a test run. A trio of control cavities and covers. Um, there's only a few basic steps left because we've done all of the major woodwork now. There's uh, not that much left to do. Uh, I've got to drill some holes tomorrow. 
I need to put some holes through for the pickups and the bridge and the output jacks. Um, also need to drill the holes for the neck bolts in all of these. Uh, and then just sand them and finish them. Oh, and I do, oh yes, the last thing is to put the uh, recess in there to mount the bridges on this base. And then just sand them out, because at the moment they're looking a little bit rough. They're not looking very nice. And if I have to leave you for a week, and unfortunately I will have to go back to doing weekly videos, uh, I want to leave you with these looking really, really nice, because at the moment they look a bit ragged. They've been kicked around the shop, they've been... Yeah, you know, they're covered in pencil marks, and yeah, they just don't look very good. That bit's sanded out to, I think it was 40. <laughs> you know, I want to get these things cleaned up, get one coat of finish on them, because really that's the thing that we're all waiting for, and that's one of the reasons why I love doing this, is because when you put the finish on, and you see the grain just l lift out of the wood, uh, it's just the best thing in the world. So thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for subscribing, and I'll see you later. Cheers.